So there we are, the joys of winter fishing. Greeted this morning with a frozen lake. It was minus seven down here, but even though she's frozen solid and it's freezing cold, there's still a few fish to be caught, even through the ice. Your chances are, if you're fishing a lot of matches through the winter, you're gonna be faced with these conditions a couple of times through the year. But even if you're just a pleasure angler, don't let the ice put you off. I'll show you how to break it today and you can still catch some brilliant nets of fish. I've had some of my best days silverfish winter fishing through the ice, believe it or not, and F1 fishing. So I'm gonna sit on peg 15, I think. Looks like a nice little area there. And I'll show you um, the kit you need to break the ice, how to break the ice, and then when you finally do how to fish, and hopefully we'll catch, well, I'm pretty sure we will catch quite a few fish today, even though it's freezing cold. It's probably not even zero degrees yet. So we'll spend a bit of time breaking the, breaking the ice and see how I do it. And then I'm sure we'll get a nice net full of fish at the end of the day. So let's crack on and get on with it. So we're at the peg now, eh? So before we start breaking the ice, there's a few things that you're gonna need. So I thought we'd run through them, <clears throat> a few little like little pointers before we start breaking the ice and then we can make a start. So first thing is, you don't have to be a rocket science to work this out. You want a nice icebreaker, homemade job this is not made by my own fair hand. This is my mate Andrew Crocker's that I lent and never give back to him. So I've got a big lump of lead on there. I think he put that in a sweet gun tin and melted it down. I've got a nice chain on the back end of that. That'll help you saw through the ice. So when you're pulling it's like a saw in action to cut through the ice. I probably got a metre of chain. And then from that, obviously just a nice length of strong rope. All bundled up there in a bit of a mess, but we'll sort that out in a minute. So there's our icebreaker. <coughs> Second thing you're gonna need is a pair of gloves because trust me, your hands will feel like they're dropping off after this, especially if you're putting a shift in. You've got to have gloves. I've tried doing, with, doing it without gloves and your hands are literally in pain, screaming in pain by the end of it. So get yourself some gloves. The next thing you wanna think about is you know, you might be like doing this for 40 minutes. You're going to work up a bit of a sweat. So don't put all your clobber on like it's freezing today. Like I've just got a soft shell jacket on and a base layer. I've got my bib and brace and boots on. To, and obviously I don't want to get wet feet. But don't put all your coats on and, your, and you know, your snoods and all that sort of stuff. Because you, you will sweat up doing this. And then as soon as you start cooling down, you'll be shivering like a Penland council house <laughs> on your box. And you really don't. You know, it's hard enough to fish in these conditions without being freezing cold. So there's a couple of the essentials. I'm going to set my box up now. I put the camera back a little bit and then we can just sort of talk about how we're going to start breaking the ice. So let's get on with some ice smashing. Right, so we're going to make a start. I'm not going to throw it too far to start. I'm probably just going to throw it sort of 10 metres, get my eye in a little bit. All the rope now is like unraveled so it's all free around my feet making you know all around you it's not like knotted up or nothing and what i've done i've tied a little loop in the end of the rope and hooked it to the back of my seat box there so let's go and have a little throw see how thick this ice is so it's be nice nice and easy swing i'm just going to lob it out you know if i can get 10 11 meters just you know get a little gauge of what's happening here Days, that's gone straight through it's not too thick here. so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna be pulling it like almost sore like a sore in action coming back through I'm just gonna step slightly to the right of my peg so I've got a nice little I'll have a nice channel to fish it so it's nice and wide so I've just got the so it's running nice and free there now so you can see I like, probably won't be able to see, but the chain is just running on the edge of the ice now, so I'm just going to saw it back. Keep nice and low and stop the weight flipping out. So I pulled that too hard now, and I popped the weight out. So I'll throw it back in, back in the same place, making sure I'm not wrapped up in the rope anyway. goes. I'd say that's probably like 30 meters there which will be enough to where we want to fish.
Right, so that's the first trip cut out. What I'm going to do, blow in a bit, I'm going to go probably a metre and a half, two metres out to my left. So I've got like one long strip. I don't want it too wide. I'll break this up around my feet so when I'm playing fish, I can net them. So I'm happy with that. That's probably cut to about 13 metres there, a nice straight line. So I'm going to chuck it in, same distance out, but like two metres to the left. Same thing again, saw it back through. And then we'll break this middle bit up. And then I think we're going to do another one, another channel 12 left. So we've got two options. Obviously, you don't want to sit on the same line all day. You want to be able to like rotate your line, same as if you open water fishing. So let's chuck it in, cut this next channel out. And then you can feed some bait and I reckon catch a few fish. I think we'll catch a few. So let's get stuck in. Right, two channels are broken and I now I am seriously blowing. So it's just a case of now I'm going to drop the icebreaker in the middle of the two cuts just to break up those bits of ice. And then with my pole then I could just sort of shimmy them off to the side underneath the ice or on top of the ice for a nice clear channel. But before I do that I'm going to break another channel quickly, as quick as I can. So we've got two nice lines. So I'm quickly going to smash that up now and then We'll have a look about clearing these two channels out. Right, channels are cut. So now, it's just a case of breaking up the middle bits. Drop the icebreaker in a couple of times, break them up. Don't want them in little, little pieces. A couple of big old slabs would be nice, and then you can just sort of push them out, out of your way then with the pole. So we've got two nice channels cut, so that's one job we've done well. Same as anything else, the more you put into it the more rewards you should get out of it. So let's break this up. We'll break the other side up, then we'll get the pole out. Start shimmying some uh, ice sheets about you. There we go. Get the glove on. And then just a couple of throws, just break that big sheet up. And uh, I'm looking at a piece of ice there now. It's a good, got to be a good three quarters of an inch thick, so it's got a fair old frost on it. So let's break this piece up now, and then we can do some fishing. Because the ice is quite thick today, what I'm finding is it won't sort of sh this icebreaker won't shatter, you know, shatter it. So all I've got to do is chuck it. You see me go out to shots where I'm walking across to get an angle just to saw through it from the sides. You see, like people saying, "Oh, you don't want to throw your breaker too much." You know, the less the better. The less, you know, the less disturbance, obviously. But I've been, 
I recall one match I was fishing on Martin Mill and I had the ice was quite thick but not stupidly thick and I had a weed cutter on my cupping kit and I cut this lovely channel out 16 meters didn't make a sound I thought oh, I'm gonna empty this my mate Rob Jones next to me threw a big breaker in fair bit of commotion to be fair to him I thought oh he's not gonna get a bite he absolutely smashed me up well they were I blanked I never had a fish and I think he won the silvers pool and he had a carbon framed overall so don't be afraid just, you know you're making commotion as long as you do it early enough in your session, you know, as long as you give it time to settle back down, you'll be fine. So don't worry, you know, it's no good saying, oh, don't throw it in too much. Well, if the ice is bloody thick like this, you've got to throw it in a few times. So it is what it is, whatever you've got to do to break your peg. So don't worry about that. Just keep launching it and then get it smashed. So that's looking, you know, pretty goddamn good to me. So I'm going to break up this other side quickly now. And then you can skirt all the ice off left and right. Have a lovely channel. That'll have a bit of time to settle as well now. And then we can look at the rigs and the bait and the actual exciting stuff. Rather than putting in a workout first thing in the morning, yeah. Right, let's break up that other side and then we'll report back with a nice clearish peg. So this is all we're working with at the minute. Both channels are cut, but as, as you can see, still a bit of work to be done. So all we'll do, we'll get the pole out now with a with our uh, cupping kit on it and then we'll just shift all these bits of ice push them under the ice so on top wherever they want to go and then we we should have two nice clear channels right so we've got a pole and everything out ready now so what i'm going to do i'll start long and then work my way back <coughs> so i'm going to go to the edge of the ice where i broke in the furthest point push the sheets left or right underneath the ice or on top of the ice or might even drag them towards me with a cup just make sure all your joints are on tight for this. Probably wouldn't be a bad thing just to put a bit of tape on your joints because you don't want your pole coming apart. But when you are, when you do hook, hook onto a piece of ice with your pole cup, keep a bend in your, if it's going to be quite a big piece, keep a bend in your pole, that'll stop the joints coming apart. So let's get up there now. I've got hold of a piece now, so it's just a case of shimmy in him. Left or right, whichever way, whichever way you'll go the easiest really. Just shift them all off. I won't go on top of the ice there. That's all right. There's all you need that one there. So I'll just use my pole cup just to hook onto a point of the ice there. And then just push them under. There he goes up. He's Gary Goners. So we're halfway clear now. I'm gonna crack on, do the rest of it. And then I'll show you what it's like when it's all finished up. So well, you can see it's quite clear now. That was a bit of a shift to be honest. That is seriously thick that ice. You can see the stuff that's just laying on top there. So we've done well to get two channels, I think. It's probably taken us 45 minutes but it's worth putting the time in normally if you fish a match and it's solid like this they will give you a little bit more time before the all-in but if you pleasure fishing it don't matter just take your time get it then tidy and then you should get a few results out of it so let's start plumbing up okay we've plumbed up two lines it's lovely it's the same depth on each line which is perfect for what we want to do so with it being so cold ground bit wise i think and I go for some crushed expander. I'll put a pint of crush in. I'll just measure out my little in my pint box. I'll go a pint, they're not gonna need a lot of ground bait. Like not gonna feed a pint, but I'll have you never know, I'll, I'll have it there mixed up. So that's a pint. And then just because the water's quite clear, I don't want like a jet black mix. I just want to take a little bit of the yellow off of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go a quarter of a, a quarter of a pint. Of dark of uh, F1 dark, so I've got that crush in there, and then I've got a nice little bit of sweet and a bit of fish meal off of that dark. If I mix that dry, So 
there's our ground bit next. So what I'm thinking is because it's it's so cold, I'm just going to sort of fish for like anything to swim, so whatever we can catch. I think we'll catch some skimmers, maybe an odd chub, and I want to give myself the chance of catching some carp as well. So I think that little bit of crushed expander, I've got a couple of dead pinkies, which are brilliant this time of the year, and I've also got a couple of red maggots, and I've got some casters. But I think what I'm going to do, also well, the best chance of a few bites, I'm going to feed sort of one line with a little ball like that, with some dead pinkies in it. And on the other line, I think to the right, I'm going to feed maybe <clears throat> a hundred milligram bit, sort of loose, like that sort of consistency there, with a few dead pinkies and an odd dead maggot. So we can, that's the sort of line we can leave for later in the session and when we go on it we might get a nice run of fish because there's a, a bit of a bed of bait there and on our other line then that's more of a line we should get a bite quicker on that line because there's less feed and then we can just sort of top up with little nuggets or maybe tap a few maggots in over it <clears throat> just to get ourselves fishing to start with and if the fishing's really good and i think you know we could catch a load here maybe i'll open those casters because <clears throat> they do love casters on this lake <clears throat> or we can be a little bit more positive with our ground bait so that's the bait, very simple. It's just about catching some fish today. Whatever comes along, hopefully we'll have a few carp and a few bream and a few other surprises because there's some all some beautiful fish in this lake, some big perch and all sorts. So let's jump on the box. Let's have a look at the rig. Similar rig to what we used last time. We'll feed the peg and then we'll go from there. Right, so onto our rig. <clears throat> like I said earlier on, we're just going to try and catch whatever we can. It's flat calm, not a breath of wind, so we can use a nice fine bristle float, dot everything down, it'll be lovely. Um, because the water's frozen, what you've got to watch with hollow, elast hollow elastics in particular, what you'll get is when they get like, when the, what you'll find with hollow elastics, when it's really cold like this, you've got ice on the water and it's frosty, you can have a nightmare with hollow elastics where you like you catch a fish, ship back, net it, eh? and you look at your top and you think, why the hell is that three foot of elastic hanging out? It, it like freezes your elastic. So if you can, try and use just like a solid elastic. So what I've got, I've gone for a solid six elastic there, a lovely all round elastic. I'll get my carp in on it when we have a bonus carp, but it's nice and soft for the bream, maybe a few big roach and whatever else we catch. If you want to fish a little bit heavier, then maybe look at those hybrid elastics. They can be worth a look. They're not really my cup of tea, to be honest. I'll either use a hollow or an eight, six, or a five solid elastic. So I've gone for the six today. Nice all-round elastic. I'm sure we land a carp. Just got to take your time a little bit, but you'll get them in. No bother at all. Mainline is 013. Just because when you're using these fine bristle floats, the line's really nice and supple and it helps like you float dot down if you've got too thick of a main line what you'll find is with a memory that's in the line and the line's a bit stiff it'll make your, your uh, bristle of your float just rise up out of the water a little bit so i like a lighter main line if i can the fish aren't going to be fighting too hard so it'll be right we've got one of our uh, mick wilkinson maggots on there that we've been using the last few videos i absolutely love them i think they're great and then the shorting pattern is the same as what we sort of always use. I've got too many tattoos in my hands, you can't see the bloody shot. So there you are, look. Just tapered shorting pattern, getting further and further away. And what I've done on this, I've got an 010 hook length, an 18 F1 pellet hook. I thought I'd go 10 rather than 08, because if we do hook a carp, should get him on, on 010, give us more of a chance of getting him. So that's the rig, nice and simple. It's the same rig for both lines, there's absolutely no difference in depth, which is perfect. So let's jump on the box, let's feed a little bit of bait, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck some clothes on because obviously I've cooled down a bit now, it's starting to get a bit cold. Chuck some clothes on and then hopefully we can drop it on our negative line and get an odd bite. And then later on, when we drop on our positive line, we'll have a nice little arrival. So let's get on with it and get some fishing done. Right, so finally we can begin. So like I said earlier on, we're going to feed two lines. The first line, I'm going to feed negative line because that's where we're going to start. So it's just going to be a little marble of ground bait, probably the size of a, a mar maybe between a marble and a walnut, real small, but with a couple of dead pinkies in there for a little bit more attraction and a little bit of food in there. And that's 
on the left hand lane. Just want to take my time getting it out. I don't want to drop it in halfway across or whatever. What you can do, you can actually ship across the ice if you want to. Where you're just going to drop in. And then I plumbed up. So I'm just holding on to the joint between my 13 and 14. Just in line with the point of the island there. So what I've done, I've given myself, I'm, I'm not feeding right tight to the ice. I'm probably 18 inches off the edge of the ice there. So if I need to, I can go past my feed. So I'm going to plop that in. There. And then my next line is going to be a hundred milligram bit. I'm pushing in there, and then I put a few pinkies in there as well. Not many, just a few. And then cap it off. I'm just going to feed this loose, squeeze it in like that. Again, I'm on the same bit, just on the joint there of my pole, in line with that stake on the far side. Just turn it over, let the bait come out. <laughs> so the lines are fed. What I would say is don't be too keen to start. It's going to take a while to get a few bites. So I'd sooner just give that 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, let it settle down a bit. I'm going to chuck some clothes on now because it's gone cold. We've cooled down a bit now after we've been sweating. I'm going to chuck my rest of my clobber on my windstopper and stuff, my snood. And then when we come back, we'll drop in on the left hand line. Hopefully there'll be an odd fish there we can tick off and then later on get a nice arrival on our right hand line. So let's get dressed up and get warm again. So finally we're ready to start. Chuck my clobber on, jacket, snood. Got to keep warm when it's cold I guess or your concentration will go to absolute rubbish. So I'm going to start on my negative line like we said. I reckon it's been 15 minutes since we fed that line. I, I wouldn't want to like feed it and go straight in on it. I think you're better off letting it settle for a bit not sort of catching the first fish that comes in there you know let a, an odd fish come in there and have a look so i'm going to start with two fluoro pinkies if you're ever unsure when the weather's like this you will never ever go wrong with two fluoro pinkies so let's mount two now on this 18's f1 pellet so i'm going to start i'm not going to put a cup or nothing on the start i think we'll go in depending on what fish we catch if we go in and catch an odd eyed and an odd chub I might even put like a little pot and just sprinkle a few maggots in. If it's skimmers though, I'm happy just to top up with little tiny thumbnails a bit of ground bait with a few dead, you know, dead pinkies in there. And if you catch a carp, I think we'll just catch a carp in amongst them. So let's ship in, see if we can nick one. It's sort of about midday now, so it's about the right time of day to start catching some fish. Elastic's working nice, so let's just drop in and see if we can nick a fish. Right, so we've shifted into our mark, you know, there's robins absolutely everywhere. But I'm just going to throw a few pinkies for them. I wonder if you could, uh, if I just put them there on my hook box. I'll see if they'll come and eat them. So I'm just going to lay the rig in now. I'll just lay it into the side. You know, you can't really, you're limited when you're ice fishing. You can't sort of flick around, you know, around your feet so much or nothing. You've just got to sort of do what you can do. So we'll just see what sort of... you. What sort of response we get now? There's an odd little like, not bubble, but like the ground bit's been activated. There's a few like little shimmers on the surface there. So I think that might be where a fish is going to come over the feed. What 
that's nice when it's when you're fishing through ice is you can dot your floats right down to a little pimple because there's no like surface skim there's no ripple or nothing see there's an odd little in, not an indication but a bit of movement on the surface of the water like something's over the ground bit hard to explain really but like a little shimmer on the surface there what you find with like freezing cold days and fishing through ice oh is that a big then is like the last part of your session you know the last sort of two hours is when you catch most of your fish i'd say the first sort of you know hour two hours will be just a patience game you know wherever you can catch as a bonus that's why it's nice to put this real negative line in <coughs> but then later on in the session expect a few fish just to group up over that 100 mil of, of bait we put in so don't be like disheartened you know if after an hour hour and a half two hours you haven't had a bite because you'll be amazed like when you catch your first one you can just be steady away then till the end you know you're not going to win it in the first hour it's that last sort of two two and a half hours is where the damage is going to be done There's still a lot little like movement on the surface there over that bait. It's got those two fluoro pinkies on. The float is dotted right down lovely but there. Little black bristle on him. There you go. So that was a tiny little dink then. Watch this ice, that's the problem. What I'm going to do, I'm going to break down twice. Just because in and around my feet there's a bit of floating ice. That was a tiny, tiny little dink then. So we've been in there, uh, probably been fishing 11 minutes. And what have you got? Big skin, I Now that is a lovely fish to catch at any time let alone when it's been minus seven and frozen solid what a start that is just over that tiny little thumbnail of bait two fluoros on the hook like i said never ever fails if the fluoro pinkies are failing you know it's rough so let's pop him in the keep net what i'm not going to do now i'm not going to feed again if anything, I'm happy enough just to sort of put that top kit down. You know, I'll have two minutes now. You're probably not going to drop straight back in and catch one. If, you, if you've got a flask of coffee, just have a little drink now. Give yourself two minutes. <coughs> and then drop in. And hopefully there'll be another one there waiting for us again. But what a brilliant start. Ten, well, 11 minutes in and we've got a pound and a half skimmer. Let's go. So that was a brilliant start, that. So it's been a couple of minutes since I caught that fish. I'm gonna go back in now. Two pinkies, again. Two fluoros, obviously. Two discos, as we like to call them. I don't think it pays to like hammer them early doors. I think you're better off just nurturing it, you know, not rushing back in after you've had one. So it's been probably three or four minutes since that last fish. I'm gonna drop back in again now. You know, you're just trying to prolong rate for as long as you can so not go in hammer three and three chucks and you can't get another bite just about eking them out for as long as you can and then hopefully later on in the session it'll be it'll be lift off then and we can have a nice run of fish so let's get back in
Well, that was a lovely bite. Just absolutely rocketed it in. That's been in there. Five and a half minutes for that bite. And that feels a little bit carpish, that one. Such a nice bite, just rocketed under. Those two pinkies again. Yeah, that's a carp, look at that. Or maybe one of them chub. But you've just got to be careful now. This is where like a nice soft elastic comes in. Yeah, that's going. Cool. Because they will try to obviously zoom off under the ice and you can't follow them. So you want a nice soft elastic so they can run. It's just a case of holding on to them now until they sort of come back to you. It's a bit of an assault course when it's fishing through these ice channels, but patience is the way. So he's right up there now, look. So that. See the elastic all the way underneath the ice there, but it's quite high in the water. Without a doubt, that's a car. <coughs> so you've just got to take your time now. There's all you know. If your line catches on these edges of these ice, they can see you off quite easily. He's going. So I'll just dunk my tip under the water when he runs off under the ice. If I can't follow him. Just push my pole under. Just break off a couple of sections at a time so you can just jam your sections back on if you need to because if you've got your whole pole behind you fishing in these ice channels and it runs off it's hell of a job to get the angle to get your sections back on so like that now that's running off again there I'm just gonna hold on to him a second some lovely carp in the slick It's a good fish as well. Oh yeah, it's a lovely fish. He wrapped himself up in a the line there, so I've just got to watch that. Still run off like that. Here he comes. Is that what chance of him? Nice fish. Nice carp. In the pan. Nice pan, dude. That there is definitely what we're after. A nice ice carp. Probably. Oh boy. Hold on. 
Why is he so alive and he's supposed to not fight with his cold? Here we are, nice. Nice car. Big deep. So I think what I'm going to do, because we've had a car, I'm just going to top it up with a similar size little walnut to what we fed to start with because that fish has kind of run us all over the peg now and probably disturbed any of the fish that's there. So I'm going to top it up and then again I'm just going to have two minutes chill out before I drop back in and have another go. So for the top up I'm going to put like, what have we got, eight or ten pinkies in there in that little bit of Crown base a little bit on the dry side. I think I might even wet that up a little bit. It feels like a little bit too dry for me. But you know, that's sort of one of them. You know, cup. So that was a nice car. And that just goes to show you like that balance tackle, that single six elastic, it never got frozen, never got stuck in our pole. 013 main line, the float is sitting down to a little pimple lovely. You've got an 010 hook length on, so like there. I think if I had 08 on there, that would have broke me that fish. But 010 gives you that bit of security. And those F1 pellets in an 18 are lovely, lovely hooks for when you're not quite sure what you're going to catch. So I think the gear is right, the feeding seems to be right. Let's just have two minutes, get my hands back warm, and we'll drop back in again. So a couple of minutes has passed again since we had that nice carp. That's two fish and two chucks now. Which is lovely. I'm going to stick with those two fluoro pinkies because there's no point changing from a winning combination, is there? Let's just see if that top up has helped the peg. I'm hoping it hasn't wrecked it, but I wouldn't want to drop back in after a carpet out without feeding a little bit of bait. So let's see if we can nick another. Got to negotiate the ice on the way out. What you'll find is that as the day goes on, a few little bits will get dislodged and end up settling in your little channel, but that's okay. As long as they're not attached, they're free moving, you'll find. So let's just lay that rig back in. Straight in again. Straight in over our little topper. A skimmer, I think, this time. Lovely little bite to that little blocked out flow. So that's a nice fish still. Big old skimmer, I think, yeah. right down that clear water. Absolutely clonking great skimmers. Look. Stop shaking. Beauties, isn't he? Pop him back. So I don't need to feed again now after that fish. I think the way we're fishing is right to the minute. I'm not too worried about putting that little pot on to sprinkle any loose bait, just because we're catching skimmers. If we start having a few eyed or an odd chub, I will put a little pot on and then just sprinkle a few maggots in, but I don't want to try and do too much too early. You know, we've had three drops, we've had three fish, so obviously we're doing something, right? <clears throat> if the session changes, then I'll look to change the way I'm feeding, but for now, I don't want to wreck anything. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. And keep ticking over, putting a few fish in the net. So we've been sat on the feed now for about seven minutes and I haven't had a bite. So just before I top up again, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to ship half a section past my feed, up right up to the edge of the ice. Probably looking at I don't know, two and a half foot past where I fed. Just see if there's a fish hanging off the back, just before I top it up. Because I don't want to top it up too much because it's going quite nicely. So I'm just hedge my bet, just push out to the ice. There might be an odd fish just sat off the back of our feed. So we'll give this a minute or two. If it don't go, I'm going to re-top it up again, I think. Oh, 
quickly, but that was literally a tiniest little indication. You know, if you weren't concentrating on that, there was no way you'd have seen that little bike. That was the joke of a bike, that was. It's had a little tiny little rise and then it just sort of shimmered and it whacked it and it went on there. So that just goes to show, still fish in the area, they just backed off the feed there. These robins are having a right scrap here now. Feels like a good fish to that. I think it's a carp again. Just a tiny, tiny little bite leg. I don't know if you blink and you'd miss that. Ah, it's going under the ice. Oh. I'm just going to sink my pole tip, you know, down to like all my number one sections under the water now. Just let him go if he wants to go. Mm, ah, I might come off. It just, there was nothing you could sort of do there. You just go in and go in and go in. Done it. But that's sort of part and parcel of like ice fishing. You're limited to how much room you've got. You know, you can only follow them so far, and some of the fishing here are up to 20 pounds. So sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. So what we'll do, I'm going to top that one up now again. Do for a top up. So I'll top him up, and then we'll give it a minute or two. Drop back in, try and catch another, and I think then perhaps we'll swing around onto our more positive line see if any fish have settled over that ground bit. Okay, so we topped up. New hook length on. Let's see if that top up will bring a bit of response. And if it does, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to swing round onto my right-hand channel over that 100 mil bait <coughs> and see if anything's settled over that. So hopefully there'll be one waiting for us on this line. Just got to negotiate a bit of floating ice on the way out, so I'll ship out my rig out the water and then just lay him in. It's definitely not getting any warmer, I reckon it's gone colder since I got here this morning. Was a little bit. That was a bit there. It just shows a fish have come straight to our little bit of feed it in, which is a good sign. Because we caught one quite quick last time after we topped up, and if we catch another one this time after the top up, sort of gives you the license then to top up a little bit more regular and not wait so long between feeds. Tiny, tiny little bike again. So we've been in a little bit of time for that one. That's for seven minutes after that topper. But it feels a nice fish again. I think that's going to be a carp of some description. So, again, yes, yeah, a carp. I'm going to break off there. gone absolutely freezing now. Much colder than what it was when we got here this morning. So we'll push it back on again. Going for a run. Just gonna float a nice there, just ship around that. Just a bit of a job to get these big old carp in on. You know, when there's ice you just can't quite follow them and they do fight notoriously hard in this thing. But a bit of patience, we might get him. See him go in there now, look. He is off out there towards the island. At a rate of knots. Oh, boy. Oh, he's done us again. Oh, what a disaster.
control. Let's pop another hook length on. I'm not going to top it up. I'm just going to leave it alone now for... No, actually I will top it up. I'll top it up again and then I'm going to swing around onto my right hand line. A little bit more positive and see if we can catch a fish in there. At the minute we're 3-1 down to the carp. Okay, so we've topped up on the left hand side. <coughs> Let's have a look if there's anything settled over that 100 mil of bait we put in. I'm going to stick the two pinkies again because we've had a few bites on them. So let's just see if there's something over that line. <coughs> Hopefully we can catch one here. And it's the same as any kind of fishing. If we can get two lines sort of... Two lines fired up when we can drop in, catch a fish and just keep rotating. That's the days you, you go from, you know, a nice day where you might catch a handful of fish to a spectacular day and catch a load. It's very rare you'll just keep plundering one line and just keep catching, keep catching. You need to have somewhere else to drop. So let's have a look at this side now. I'll just try and get away from these bits of ice that have sprung up. Look, ship up high. And then we're in. Right, so no, no app. Oh, oh lift again there. I was just about to say no bites on this line, and I was just about to swing back round to the other line. I just had a little indication there, so I'll just give it another minute, and then I'm going to swing back round on our left hand line where we just topped up. We've been on this line now probably eight minutes or so, and not had a, you know, not had a fish. Had a few little signs. So maybe just needs a little bit longer yet. I'm gonna swing back round now over here. Little flicker there on the floor. a minute that was our quickest fight so far. Those are the kind of fish you can catch through the ice, look. Lovely fish. So there you are. That's the end of the session. My fingers literally can't take another second. They're absolutely screaming for me to pack up. We've done all right in the end. We've probably had, I don't know, 10, skim like 10 good skimmers. Uh, we've had that nice carp. We did get bust up by two carp that have gone off under the ice. <laughs> but, you know, it's like having a fight in a phone box. Somebody's going to get smashed up when it's close quarters like ah, And smashed up we got by them too. But we did get one in. Um, every fish has come off the left-hand line where I just fed that tiny little marble a bit with a few pinkies in it. Every single fish we've had has been there. We've had a few signs where we put that 100 mil of bait in. I did have a few like lifts and stuff on my float. I think there were some fish there sat up, you know, well up off the bottom over that feed. But as the session's gone on, you know, it's getting on now a little bit and it's just gone so cold. It's amazing that anything will feed. But I hope that just goes to show that you can still have a brilliant day's fishing, even through the thickest of ice. You know, this lake is spring fed and it never freezes. And for this to freeze today just goes to show you how cold it's been. And we still managed to put you know a nice net of, of winter fish together so i'm gonna get some stuff packed up get in the van and get those heaters on an absolute full bore i'll catch you up on the next one